Laura Castle. Leland James was only eight months old when he was given to foster parents. He was moved into the castle's home by Cumbria County Council social workers in August 2020. Laura Castle, 38, and her husband, Scott Castle, 35, were Leland's foster parents. Within the first few weeks, Laura began to feel tired of the baby. She thought taking care of the baby all the time was hard. She'd send messages to her husband, Scott, while he was at work, criticizing Leland. James, calling him vulgar names and a moaning whinge bag and describing how she had absolutely leathered him. In one exchange in September 2020, she wrote, I'm seriously at my wit's end. Nobody tells you about this nonsense. I'm just an abusive parent, so it seems. Scott Castle responded, You're not an abusive parent, baby. Not at all. Don't say that. I think he's a little too up for us to handle. Let's just call it quits. I don't want you to have a mental breakdown. You're more important to me than he. Scott was very busy at work. He didn't have time to listen to her nagging. He'd come home tired and go to sleep, never imagining that she was thrashing the baby. Laura also informed social services that she didn't want the baby as she couldn't bond with him, but there were no concerns for his safety. In November 2020, concerns were raised that Laura Castle had said during a home visit that she didn't love Leland James and was struggling to bond with him. The following month, the Castles were told by a senior social worker that she wouldn't support any application to formally adopt Leland James at that stage and recommended further therapeutic parenting sessions. The possibility of removing Leland James from their care was canvassed, but Laura Castle said her extended family loved him, so he was not going anywhere. Laura began to hate Leland, to the point that her inhumane behavior grew. She'd ignore him even if he wasn't well and leave him unattended in his crib all day. Leland gradually began to feel sick and tired. Laura was constantly torturing him. She'd slap him on the head and body, throw him on the floor, and torture him so he would stay quiet. On January 6, 2021, Laura brutally tortured Leland to the point that he was unconscious for hours. He had breathing difficulties and was unresponsive. Laura was happy that Leland was sleeping longer than usual, but then she began to worry, thinking it was maybe because of the beating. She went to check on him and found him dying. Laura began to panic because his death could put her behind bars. She quickly called 999 at about 8.15 a.m. and told them that Leland had fallen from the sofa and hit his head on the floor. He had been unconscious and breathing awkwardly until then. Leland James was taken to Alder Hay Children's Hospital in Liverpool, where doctors were highly suspicious of Laura's account. They said the baby had bleeding in the brain and it didn't seem to be due to falling from the sofa. The poor baby didn't gain consciousness and died on January 6, at 3 p.m. Laura Castle told police, as well as family and friends, that her death was a tragic accident that occurred while her husband, who worked the night shift, was sleeping. The Crown Prosecution Service said Laura's story didn't explain the youngster's injuries, and also that the medics raised concerns as the extent of his injuries didn't match her account. Footage of Castle's police interviews shows her lying to the cops about what happened in a bid to cover up her actions. It was revealed during the investigation that baby Leland had several injuries on his head and scratches and bruises on his body. His medical report showed that the baby was beaten every day. Some of the bruises and wounds were old, while many were new. Laura lied. I went over to the sofa and sat on my knee. I used to have wheat bix in his mouth. So I went to give him his bottle, but then I realised he had the wheat bix still in and took it out and then he coughed. So but I wiped his face, sat him on my knee here, sort of straddled. So I'm trying to put the wipes back in the coffee table drawer. So I'm leaning over. And then I just, I didn't have hold of him and I just stood up like that. I went, right. And he fell on the floor. I didn't put him on the sofa. I just was frightened. He was on the sofa. I was just frightened because I didn't have hold of him. Then I picked him up. It sort of was a big bang. 
picked him up as the was uh, in the room, I don't think, and then was like struggling, like, like gasping. A second clip showed Castle replying no comment to police as they quizzed her over previous times. She admitted slapping the baby. Laura Castle was arrested for further investigation. She kept changing her statement about the brain injury and what happened that day. But detectives found out that the day Lylan died, Laura searched the internet for what might cause a bleed on the brain and then gave a different account to police in her interview. Laura stuck by her story until the day the jury was sworn in for her trial at Preston Crown Court when she pleaded guilty to manslaughter. She began to feel scared, so she spilled a little truth in fear. She said she never loved Leland because he kept crying all the time. That day, he was sobbing for hours when she shook him at breakfast, and his head hit the sofa's armrest before he fell off her knee onto the floor. However, this appeared to be half truth and half lie. That day, Leland was crying for some reason when Laura lost it. She was so furious that she struck the baby with the sofa, threw him on the floor and hit him several times, causing his death. Medical experts told the court that the degree of force required to cause Leland James injuries would have been severe and likely to be a combination of shaking and an impact with a solid surface. Neighbors told the court they frequently heard Mrs. Castle shouting and what sounded like a child being slapped. Charlotte Day, the foster mother who took care of Leland James for the first eight months of his life, told the court he was a content and happy boy who loved playing with his toys and being carried and cuddled. Prosecutor Michael Brady QC said it was the Crown's case she did it too. The boy, as she lost her temper and suggested she smash the back of his head against a piece of furniture, Laura denied intending to kill Leland James or seriously harm him, but jurors took just two and a half hours to convict her of murder. Laura's husband, Scott, was also arrested, but after an investigation, he was declared not guilty. That day, he returned from work and went to bed as he was exhausted. He had no idea that Laura had been torturing a 13-month-old baby behind his back. Scott said he was never concerned that anything bad would happen with the boy and trusted his wife. The court heard that an adoption panel had selected the castles following an application process overseen by Cumbria's Children's Services Department. Sentencing her to life imprisonment, Mr. Justice Baker said it was nothing less than a tragedy that she didn't return Leland James to the local authorities when those discussions took place. He told Castle, Precisely what took place on the morning of January 6, 2020, one may never be known. As even now, I do not consider that you told the jury the full circumstances leading to the death of Leland James. I consider that your account significantly underplays the extent and degree of violence which you inflicted upon Leland James that morning, which of necessity must have involved either very severe or considerable impact and oscillation forces to have caused the internal injuries while some of the external injuries were consistent with slapping, pinching, and prodding. He said she had committed a significant abuse of trust as a carer for a looked-after child and had caused dreadful emotional upset to Leland James' birth mother and his previous foster parents. Laura kept crying loudly when the judge was giving his final verdict. She knows that she'll spend the next 18 years in prison. After the incident, Scott has decided to divorce Laura, which is well-deserved. Leland is in peace now, but Laura will suffer for her sin forever. She'd never be able to come out of prison. Every day, she'll realize what she's done with the little angel. She could have become a better mother, and he'd have grown incredibly with her love and care. But she took her son's life under her care for only five months. That's a wrap for today. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up, share, and subscribe to the channel to see our latest content.